Hi, I'm Judith Dreyer. Thank you for joining me for this podcast series, At the Garden's Gate Presents the Holistic Nature of Us. My intent is to take us, you and I, into a better understanding of the concepts behind our holistic nature and how that ties directly to the holistic nature of the world around us. How can we connect the dots in practical ways that we are nature and nature is in us? I will be featuring authors and educators, practitioners and others whose passion for this earth helps us create bridges. We'll see what's trending, what's relevant to our world today, not just for land use, but to connect the dots between ourselves and nature. It's time for practical action and profound inner change so our natural world is valued once again. Today, I'm delighted to introduce you to Eagle Moon Rays, a holographic practitioner, Reiki master, certified hypnotherapist, and more. Hi, Eagle Moon. I'm delighted. Hi, Judith. I'm delighted to have you here today. <laughs> Thank you. I'm delighted too. Well, this is um, a different. We're coming at the holistic model from a different approach. We're coming at it from a practitioner who uses the field of a holographic, uh, I want to say, concept. And could you tell us more about that? What got you into holographic healing? What is it? Well, it's actually a method of healing. It's called the Malchizedek method of healing, um, incorporating the orbital hologram of love. And what I've discovered is um, I've taken it to a new level of being a very proficient um practitioner of this method of healing and it's a fascinating healing practice because um, there's certain steps that you do and when you're balancing the body you're doing it on multiple levels at the same time um, so you're working on the cellular level but you're also working on the systems of the body you're working on the meridian systems. You're working on um, the elemental systems, earth, air, fire, and water in the quintessence element. Um, you're balancing the chakra system. You're um, working on particular organ systems that are out of balance. And you're also looking at the fact that each individual it, once they have disease in their body, um, that disease can come from lots of different angles. It could come from a spiritual issue. It could come from a physical issue or mental or emotional. And um, what I find really interesting is that when you start to find the balance and you start balancing all the systems. You're also working on the spinal column as well and the original eight cells. The original eight cells are the ones that you first form in the initial conception process. So you're going from the very beginning of your physical incarnation, but you're also going and balancing your soul's blueprint as well. So there's lots of different levels to it, which makes it very fascinating. So you can zoom in on a cellular level and you can zoom out on the macro level. And I, I like to see it from the viewpoint that like Bruce Lipton mentions that there's like our bodies are a civilization of 30 trillion cells. And I also like to see that each one of our bodies is like a cell. I'm going to say the word on the body of God, but I'm talking about that oneness idea and we can balance it in oneness and we can balance ourselves and find harmony within the civilization of the 30 trillion cells. 
That's such an interesting concept. I did read Bruce Lipton's book several years ago called The Biology of Belief, and having been trained in the nursing medical profession, I found his understanding of the biochemistry of a cell fascinating and probably shifting our viewpoint in terms of where is the intelligence in the cell um, and, and from our current model. He's making a, a big change in our biology, but also relating it to our emotions. And he actually has photographs in his book showing us that a positive emotion directly affects what happens on our cell wall, positively or negatively, in terms of uh, keeping the function of the cell healthy or not. And as you and I both know in the holistic health field, disease is really dis-ease. Something has made us uncomfortable on a deeper level and opens the door for some kind of issue, uh, whatever that issue is. It could be a body-mind-spirit right. issue, as you mentioned at the beginning. So when we talk about this oneness, about being in balance or not in balance, in your, in your experience, do you feel that you can connect the dots, so to speak, between our oneness as a physical body and the Earth's oneness as a planetary body? Yeah, I find it um, really fascinating when you look at water. And I, um, years, ago, not years ago, just last year, I was, um, I went through an experience where I was actually able to experience the consciousness of water within the body and the water in each cell. And what I found incredibly amazing is the amount of communication that goes on within the body. So the liver cells communicate with the blood cells and the bile cells, and, and everything is communicating with each other. It's not a stagnant system, and there's a lot of integration, there's a lot of alignment, and there's a lot of... Um, really, truly communicating in a way that um, brings um, total wisdom within the body to balance itself. And, and I believe that the earth also has that power. Years ago, I was doing a meditation in motion um, in a Reiki training, and we were sending... This was, I don't know, maybe close to 30 years ago. And, and it was during the time where everybody was sending Reiki to the earth and sending it to the earth. And there was a lot of, um, there was a feeling of the earth is weak. And so I was imagining that I had the earth between my hands and I was sending energy to the earth. And the earth said to me, please hold me in the light. Do not disempower me by believing I cannot find balance within myself. And that stuck with me because there's a lot, the earth can balance itself just like the body has the ability to find its own harmony and balance as well. We can restore our equilibrium and we can restore our balance. You touched on several aspects in your last comments. Mm -hmm. uh, in traditional Chinese medicine, for example, they talk about um, each of our organ systems is a community and to actually do meditation work, prayer work, guided imagery work, connecting with each community. And they also recommend that you send gratitude to each community. And what I find in my travels, in my practices, is that most of us don't really see our physical body as something to work with um, as a partnership. We kind of take our physical body for granted. And I think that's what opens the door to different diseases because as resilient as our body is, it can only take so much. It does have, um, it has its own time to sort of give out, if you will. And that could be at a body, mind, spirit level. So when you talk about uh, 
looking at the cells, looking at earth, air, fire, and water, which are the basic elements of this planet. When you talk about, um, you know, looking at the body from a place of, you know, how many trillion cells as a community, I think that opens the door for us to understand disease differently and how to approach disease differently. And I'm guessing that this is what you're finding out with the different types of practices that you have between holographic healing, hypnotherapy, Reiki, et cetera. Uh, is that, yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. And I find, I find it to be really interesting because um, a couple of things. You know, I was afraid of dying of cancer since I was nine years old. So I had about 20 years of worrying about dying of cancer. And then I discovered the belief that I created in another lifetime where I was going to die of cancer. And as soon as I discovered the belief and I re-experienced the moment of my making that choice, my entire body changed. Now, I was creating cancer. I was sick for a year and um, I was in denial of the, of the whole thing. I'm not going to say I was diagnosed by an oncologist that I had cancer, but my fear disappeared and my worry of dying of cancer and my body healed itself. It started to rebalance itself and I think that there's um, such an important component when we look at what's in our subconscious mind and our subconscious mind holds a lot of our consciousness over our existence for eons and there's an aspect of the subconscious mind known as the superconscious mind which is explained as the higher self or the soul level and so when you can explore on that level, you can really shake the dice and change your, your physical health. Now, when you work with a client for any one of these modalities, especially I'm thinking hypnotherapy, can you get into the um, deeper realms of their psyche uh, and work with them on this level? Yes, you can. Yeah. Do they get it? A lot of people don't really understand past lives. Those are not words that they can really understand. What kind of a bridge do you create for those folks? Well, it's interesting because you don't need to talk about it from a past life. Like, I wouldn't, I'm saying I went to this experience where I was a little girl in France in the 1700s. But the, it, it, you, the experience is the point that you need to go to and people will go to the source of the discomfort whether it's in this time or if it's in another lifetime when somebody is really sick and they're looking for the solution and they go to a hypnotherapist they have a willingness on a higher level to go to the root cause of their disease, and they will go there. Hmm. I think that's true. I think when we're deeply motivated to seek healing, we're more open to other modalities that work from a different perspective, and sometimes they can be incredibly successful. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't always make the airwaves, but those of us in this field can recount such as yours, you know, changes in physical health, even turning around some serious diseases and illnesses into better health. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's really great. Uh, how do you use guided imagery in, in your practice? Um, I don't generally use it unless it's called for to begin with. It's not... Um, well, I'll give you an example. I was doing a program for a senior center teaching 50 senior citizens uh, locally how to do Reiki on themselves so they all were tuned and this one woman she wasn't able to come because she had just been diagnosed with cancer she had um, uh, 
they were the plan was they were going to take her sinus, they were going to take her eye, and they were going to take part of her brain. Mm. And so I went to her her apartment to meet with her and to give her a Reiki treatment. And I discovered that I was actually there to attune her so that she too could do Reiki. And what I said to her was, you know, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine your cancer and that you're you have a laser beam and you're lasering the cancer cells and you're you're killing them off and she her eyes get really big and she says i started to do that last night i was really really afraid in the middle of the night and i started to do that so it is this innate thing that we will do naturally you know i you know, perhaps from Star Wars when we were all young, but there's this innate idea that we can use the power of our mind and our imagination to bring resolution to that which is attacking us. And this woman, she had a phenomenal life change. When she went in to have her surgery, she they opened her brain up, the cancer was gone from her brain, um, they took her eye and they took her sinus. They took her eye not because there was cancer in her eye, but they wanted to make sure that the cancer wouldn't spread to her eye. So they, um, so she did have a retreatment of her cancer cells in her brain. Oh, those kind of stories don't make the airwaves, do they? But that's it's such a dramatic case of. Um, I think when we get down to a deeper belief within ourselves that we really can uh, create healing, I think that's when the healing occurs. And I've heard this before in other situations. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a dreamer. I've worked in dream schools and all of that. And when people have serious illnesses, they seem to be more open, uh, almost desperate in a way to get to that deeper place to maybe face a fear they finally get the strength to face a fear that goes very deep within us and when they do that they they experience a level of healing that is miraculous uh that's the only word i can think of it's miraculous yeah you know it's i was interviewing somebody a couple weeks ago and he gave me this really um, beautiful beautiful image he said when you um in order for miracles to take place you need to be in the vibration of play that's where miracles happen and i think what you're saying is true when people are stepping into the bigger broader picture of who they are it's a lighter vibration and in that lighter vibration they're bringing in more light into their body and that is a very joyful light it's much lighter than looking at ourselves as um a deceased body and there's a lot of contraction that happens when we're afraid for our health and we feel like we're on the edge of our life. There's a lot of unknown and there's a lot of fear of that unknown. But if you step into the place of, you know, openness and wonder, you know, when I was listening to you, Judith, I was remembering when I was pregnant, you know, they, the Native Americans say that you know, with the circle of life, when you're birthing, you're closing the circle of death. And so they're very, very close. And if you're ill, you're closer to the gap between birth and death. And it feels to me like you are naturally, if you're, re if you're concerned about your health, you are really close to the opening of your spirit and that's when you start to get your intuition and a, a new form of information I think that's true. I think we have to somehow let down our guard. You know, in the yogic tradition, they call upon it. They call it the space between the breaths, that in space. And it's a, it's a fleeting microsecond of letting our guard down. And that's when 
we can um, get information, access information. I think that's where miracles start to happen. Unfortunately, people confuse curing with healing in this process and I want to make it clear I've done cancer nursing I was an oncology nurse specialist I've seen lots of folks in different stages of life and curing and healing are not the same thing you can be healed and die anyway versus being cured sticking around for a while um, and then people wonder why things come back because they thought they were quote unquote cured uh, to me true healing occurs when we engage all of us on these deeper levels we somehow approach this gap that you just talked about where we can bring in I'm going to say God's light some kind of divine light uh, something higher than we are uh, in, as as a human being into our awareness into our energy field and that's what creates the miracle and the shift um, for healing yeah I would agree I would agree with that. Um, there was a, and there's there's a belief too. I believe with um, in collective consciousness that the physical body is solid, and I I had this experience with this couple. They were a younger couple, and this um, the wife worked at the senior center where I was doing the Reiki um, program for the seniors. And her husband came to because he had cancer and he was very, very sick. So once I became a holographic healer, they I was experimenting on him because I wanted to practice my skills and he was totally open to it. And one day um, I was doing a healing on him and we, we recorded everything. So, it, you know, so we could learn and understand more. And and all I kept saying is, you know, there, like the spirit guides are removing something from your back. And they were, they were like flushing his back with this light. And my hand just kept scooping, like I was scooping something, but I didn't have an intellectual understanding of it. Just that whatever they were doing was going to help him with his upcoming surgery. So right after the surgery, his wife sends me a very long email where the physician was almost mad because she couldn't understand what was going on. So she says to the couple, what are you guys doing? I know you're doing Reiki, but this has got to be something more. And they're like, what? And she said, all the bone spurs in his back have been removed. They're all gone. Wow. So he was he was scheduled for a 14 hour surgery. Eight hours of that surgery was going to be removing bone spurs and all the bone spurs were gone. Well, what can I tell you? I mean, we, we you and I have heard stories like that. Yeah. It's, it's hard for the general public to believe that. Um, but it does happen, doesn't it? Yeah. But that's the beauty of this work that you're offering people is an opportunity to hear a story like that and maybe broaden their focal point to, huh, how solid is reality really? Mm -hmm. Well, and we in the field of quantum physics, our physical body and our the physical forms of this universe are not solid. There are molecules in motion, and what can we do to manipulate them in a sense um, to keep balance and to keep ourselves healthy? Interesting questions. Eagle Moon, um, we're going to have to uh, end the session right now. Do you have a, a practical tip you could offer the listeners? Yes, I would recommend um, if you are sick um, that you use visualization to imagine yourself well. Really speak positively to yourself. Um, Fear, like they say, you have nothing, fear is the, you have nothing to fear but fear itself. Fear is magnetic and it will drag you to where you most fear. So the most important thing for your health and well-being is to really learn to master fear. There are a couple of ways that you can do this. One way is if you imagine a beam of light coming down from the top of your head, 
connecting with the universe and coming straight on down where your spine is. It's known as your pranic tube all the way down into the earth. And you can imagine that that light is flowing through you like turning a faucet on where you have that steady stream and you can put your fear in that flow and let it move down out of your body and into the earth. The earth knows what to do with that energy. We don't need to worry about causing harm to the earth, but it would be a really great way to cleanse and clear the fear from your body. Well, thank you. That's a that's a very practical tip for the listeners. Uh, Eagle Moon, how can people reach you before we sign off? Um, my website is Eagle Moon raise r-a-e-s dot com and my email is eagle moon dot raise r-a-e-s at icloud dot com this is wonderful i want to thank you and everyone else joining us today i really hope you feel inspired as much as i do about eagle moon's practical talk and her practical advice uh, just note that this is Judith Dreyer, author of At the Garden's Gate. I have a book and blog. My book, At the Garden's Gate, is available through my website. You can go to judithdreyer.com. That's Judith, D-R-E-Y-E-R.com, and you can get a list of where the book is available. My, on my website, you will find a replay of this podcast and a transcript in print form of this uh, podcast. So everyone, I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you for listening. Until next time, uh, enjoy. <laughs>